So what's up guys welcome to your fitness spell and today we're gonna have a surgery and we're gonna connect my torn biceps into the radial tuberosity We're ready. We're in good hands. We have a professional anesthetics He told me that I won't feel anything. Well, he doesn't promise I might feel it just a little bit see you in about two hours from now after the surgery Let's begin So what's up guys, welcome to your fitness pal and in the year 2023 this guy opened his camera and showed a small bump in his front aspect of the elbow. See me moving this? Look, look at that move. Yeah, we saw. No need to show off. Now if you take your hand and check this area, you won't have the little bump. Why? Because whoever has this lump there says that he tore his biceps. Like what happened in this case. At that moment, it was just right after the tear happened. I was on my way to the hospital. I was telling the cameraman how sad I was because it happened right after an arm wrestling match. And it was an arm wrestling match I wasn't supposed to do that day. But before all of that, we'll go back in time. And this is why we filmed everything. The surgery, us meeting with the doctors, Devon's response. See if they can tie it in more towards the forearm. And even though it's a very sensitive situation and not a picnic in Switzerland, it's very important to us to deliver the highest quality information and also to show you how you get up when you fall and proceed smartly and wisely and move on. So two weeks ago for a couple of days straight I did a lot of arm wrestling matches and the moment I forgot to take care of myself was when I've heard the hard snapping sound that stopped the match. Now the match wasn't filmed unfortunately but now you can see here on the screen how a match of that kind starts and unfortunately how it ends. It tears my heart to see that. But what happened there and how can we know what the injury is? So in our case at the very beginning we already knew. We knew what is the etiology, the biology and the pathophysiology but we'll explain in layman's terms. So our biceps muscle connects into two locations up here. The short head to the coracoid process and the long head to the supraglenoid tubercle. Both of them emerge and take a taxi down here and insert in the radial tuberosity or in the case of this injury not anymore. What happens here is that the tendon detaches and like a spring it shoots the muscle back up. That's the reason that this guy had a little bump here because this is actually the tendon that left the bone. But how do we know? In order to know exactly what happened here there are several methods according to the literature. One is squeezing the muscle. If you have a full tendon tear in your gastrocnemius muscle, your calves, and then you'll squeeze the muscle belly, there will be no movement of the foot. In a healthy leg there will be movement. In 2005 Rolex, the main author of this study, suggested to do the same only for the biceps. If we squeeze the biceps and the palm will move towards supination, that's a sign that the tendon is connected. If not, it's probably disconnected from the electricity. Second, reverse Popeye sign. This lump that you see now on the screen is called reverse Popeye sign and it's named after Popeye. If the muscle concentrates more at the lower part, it's called only Popeye sign without the reverse. And there are a couple of more tests that you can do, like a hook test or a supination test. But the most accurate way to know what really happened is through an MRI. And therefore this... This is an injury that needs to be examined using ultrasound, not MRI. Ultrasound will show it much more accurately and better isn't precise. Because an ultrasound is considered inferior on average when you look at the whole literature. Although it depends which tear we're talking about and what's more accessible at the moment. Now, after we realized what happened and I also did an x-ray to rule out a fracture, we saw that there was a full tear, meaning a disconnection of the biceps tendon. But why did I have a surgery and what did Devin say about that? See if they can tie it in more towards the forearm. One sec. Why did this happen? So, do you see him? This guy is probably the most famous guy in the world as being the one who tore both his tendons. Huge respect. He reached 70 million views, got two tears and one phrase from me. Twice as bad. But this study that came out two years ago is one of the most special ones on the topic. He took over 50 videos of bicep stairs on YouTube. Some of them you may have seen, like a tear of the biceps in a deadly. When you grip the bar with one hand like this and one hand like this, in a chocolate banana manner, or in calisthenics when you do a planche, or in a bicep curl, or arm wrestling, and analyzed exactly why it happens. One, except for one case, all of the injuries happened while being in supination, when the palm is turned upwards. 
second, there was no case in which the elbow was bent over 45 degrees. It mostly happened between 0 degrees to 10 and between 10 to 45. Thirdly, most of the tears happen during an isometric contraction, meaning when the muscle is in a static mode. It neither lengthens nor shortens. And four, there was always a background noise. Yes this noise. So, what should we do? How can we avoid such a tear? Are all the exercises we showed you dangerous? And you shouldn't do them? And is surgery a must? It's not. As we explained in this channel, if you're subscribed, you can also do a supination without the biceps. You can also flex your elbow without the biceps. There are other muscles that are responsible for that. For example, the supinator and the brachialis and the brachioradialis. Meaning a surgery isn't a must. So, why did I do a surgery? First of all, and most importantly, aesthetics. It's very important for me for the biceps to be connected. In that case I'll have a nice set of photos for my Instagram. Second of all, according to this meta-analysis that was released in 2022, surgery resulted in more strength in both supination and elbow flexion. But there's a problem. When you do a surgery, complications can occur. According to this meta-analysis, a not-so-nice complication called heterotopic ossification can occur, which is when a bone is formed in a place where it shouldn't form, like inside a muscle, for example. There are also complications that can occur in the nerves, like a radial nerve palsy, which means exactly this. Show me what's going on with your wrist. Well, my hand is staying right down. It won't straighten out. Can you make your hand only go with up? This, only with this hand here. Just by, by doing that. And it won't, it won't come out by itself. But that depends on which procedure you do. If it's a double incision or a single incision, you'll understand in a sec. So, surgery. When I texted Devin about what happened, he responded with this. See if they can tie it in more towards the forearm. Tie it in more towards the forearm. Even a little bit makes a big difference. If you can do that, even if you, they do the same spot, no problem. But if you can get them to tie it in further, just a bit, it comes back stronger for arm wrestling. That's for sure. And actually, that's exactly what happened in the surgery. So this is what was disconnected up to this point. This tendon runs through the forearm between the radius and the ulna and exits here. We took it a bit further as you wanted. So, surgery. I received a lot of recommendations about Dr. Frank Atlant. Or in other words, many tendons were torn until I met him. He sounded very professional, but most importantly, he agreed to bring the camera into the operation room. Now, the surgery that was performed was a double incision, and the difference between a single and a double incision is the number of openings in the skin. In a single, it is one, and in a double, it's Two. One will be in this area, the antecubital fossa, and that's in order to find and take the tendon. And if it's a double incision, the second one will be at the posterior aspect of the forearm, and that's in order to connect it. Now, the surgery itself was very fun. I felt I was in excellent hands. Hello, doctor. And during the surgery, I dreamt of the first preacher curls I'll do straight after the recovery. <laughs> But let's be serious for a second, it's very important to understand. You shouldn't be fearful of those exercises. In general, the injury isn't that common, but a little bit more than before. For example, in some countries, the injury six quippled itself, meaning it was six times as much, from 2001 to 2016. But according to the researchers, it's not because the biceps became more vulnerable, rather, more people train as time goes by. And when more people are training, there is a higher chance for this injury to occur. And according to the literature, after an injury of that kind, we see that if you don't take your time too much, you can return to your regular activities quicker. And we haven't even begun. All you have seen till now was the before. The real part comes now. The rehabilitation part to make sure there are no complications. Now, why did we upload this video? We could have filmed a few videos beforehand, filmed them before the injury, skip this part and you wouldn't have known it happened. But it's also okay to get injured. Not okay, it happens. We're all humans and sometimes shit just happens. From injuries you get up, progress and get stronger. And when you learn about the injury, about the anatomy, about the process, and how you decrease the risk of injuries like we explain in this channel, you can train more safely by yourself without worrying too much that something like that can occur. If an injury of that kind happened to you, consult with your doctor and see what's appropriate. In order to learn about the anatomy behind these types of injuries, subscribe to this channel, consider giving a like, and we'll see you in the next video that will even be crazier than this one. Bye bye!